gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. Morning, truck buddies. Airborne trucker checking in from uh, Florida. So I got a uh, 12 o'clock appointment, man. It's 5.30, man, heading to Auburndale, man. I want to talk about something right quick, man. There's two things for certain in life. That's death and taxes. Death and taxes, man, it's... That's all we got. That's all we got, man. So, like I said, when you're home, hey, think about home and just, hey, just, and just have a great time, man, because you're going to blink and next thing you know, you know, your spouse is older, your kids are older, you know, you're older, you know, Kids have moved out. Everybody's grown. The next thing you know, hey, you know, you hope you live, you, you know, you live your best life, and and that's it, man. But death and taxes, and taxes come around every year. <laughs> so, hey, make sure you plan accordingly, you know. But yeah, like I say, man, uh, hopefully everybody had a wonderful Easter. Um, I decided to uh, to leave Monday today. Uh, I wasn't going to leave Sunday night or anything like that to park up um, because it's less than 200 miles and a uh, 12 o'clock appointment. I haven't been to this uh, Blue Lynx, but they're all hit or miss. Uh, but the reviews I read so far, they're pretty good. So um, hopefully I time it just right. I get there a little early. Uh, if they take me, great. If not, I'll have to wait and i do my two-hour break. And hopefully I'll, I'll time it out that way. But um, delivering in the middle of Florida on a Monday. So... Hey, it is what it is, man. You got to roll with the punches and, 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 and just do what you got to do. Uh, thank you for all my subscribers. I appreciate all y'all rocking with me. You know, it just, I'm glad I'm able to help somebody. If, you know, anybody that comes across the channel and I'm able to help one driver, and I know I've helped uh, quite a few. I can't say hundreds because I've only met uh, a handful, but I've, you know, I've get emails and stuff saying how I helped them, and, I, and that means a lot to me, and that's, that's probably the closest thing to training that I'll ever do because... I get that message or you no know, or a comment every now and then if, if I train and I won't train because one the way how it, my opinion is just it's not beneficial to the trainer. Sometimes you can make just as much money, you know, being by yourself than training. It just depends, you know. But I just I just don't have that that uh that patience anymore to actually take the time and actually train somebody but you know I, I like dropping videos I like doing videos and I like just running the drivers on you know right on the road and just if I can help out that way I have no problem helping out that way but to actually train full-time for TMC I won't do it man you can you, you can check every video your comment uh, from from last 300 videos I'm telling you I, I won't train man it just it's just a different climate just a different environment it's just it's just very interesting situation I leave it at that but um, I want to talk about something I forgot. I get I go off on a channel sometimes and I forget. But yeah, man, like I say, you just you just gotta just do the best that you can, man. You know, uh, nothing lasts forever, good or bad. You know, you just gotta kind of like I say, plan accordingly and do what you can, because you know life is a roller coaster, just like you know trucking or you know sometimes any job in general is a roller coaster. Life in general is a roller coaster, so you kind of just gotta hold on for the ride. And enjoy the ride, you know, because once the ride is over, man, hey, you're dunsky. <laughs> like I said, go back to death and taxes. That's the only two things I guarantee, man. Uh, but, yeah, man, I felt good, man. Just, you know, poked around the house, went to the beach again, uh, had dinner, went out for like a brunch or whatnot. You know, walked around to the beach for a little bit. You know, the weather's starting to get nice. You know, everybody's starting to hang out and do stuff like that, so... Did that uh, Saturday and Sunday. Didn't really do anything. Just sat around, watched basketball, watched a little bit of UFL, the United Football League for for the uh, the sports junkies or sports dummies. I don't know about it. That's a pretty decent product. I mean, it's not it's not great. It's not bad. You know, it's it's entertainment. You know, but did that. Didn't do too much. You know, like I said, just when you're home, man, you just gotta kind of un unwind. 
But at the same time, when you're home, man, you know you still got things to do, you know, around the house, take care of, you know, your significant other, children if you have them, you know, you got a, a to-do list. But you got to make sure, you got to have that balance and that happy medium of doing both. Now, I know that even if it wouldn't have been a holiday, Saturday or Sunday, I was going to have to do something with the wife. You know, I can't, you just can't just sit around and not do nothing for two days. So you kind of got to do something. So take one day if you have it, the time, do whatever they want to do. And I had to cut the grass, did that. And then like take one day for yourself if you can, you know. But you kind of got to, you, you got to, you got to take care of your family, man. If you got children, you got to help out with that. You can't just come home. I'm, I'm telling you, man, you just can't come home and just like, just do nothing. As tired as you are, you, you got to, you got to muster up the strength to do something with your kids. You know, like I said, you're sniffing other stuff like that. But um, got a 200 mile ride down to Auburndale. I'm gonna stop, uh, refuel, grab some water. Got some fruit. I'm doing pretty good. I've been maintaining my weight. I think I lost another pound. So, hey, that's all that matters, man. Uh, any kind of progress is good progress, forward progress, that is. So, we're gonna get on down this road, knock out these 200 miles, get down to this Blue Lynx. And see what they have to say and see if I can get unloaded early. Like I said, if not, it's no big deal. But I hope I can get unloaded. Alright, so sometimes, hey, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So of course every now and then you gotta play dumb, alright? Twelve o'clock appointment, got here at ten o'clock. It's quarter to eleven, getting unloaded. Yeah, I was like, you know. Appointment times at 12. I said, I showed him my paperwork. So there wasn't no time on there. You know, it is what it is, man. All he could have did was say, you got to turn back around. And I would have turned back around and went outside the gate. But that's how you got to do it sometimes, man. That's how you got to do it. Uh, like I say, some places, once you figure them out, you know what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, like I say, some blue links are tight on times and some aren't. But uh, I'm appreciative for it though. Definitely appreciative for the, the early unload, man. Like I said, they could have made me wait till 12 o'clock, but they didn't, so. Uh, but they, they do have appointment times and I seen that I was on the bottom of the list. I think they had like, uh, I was 12, it was like another 11. And then uh, it was, I know it was four of the trucks before me, but hey. Cold world, man. Hey, sometimes, hey, sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. So, like I said, I already come to come to terms that it's Monday, lunchtime in Florida. Not too much gonna come out of here. So, you know, when you don't park up, or if you just, you know, you just you at the mercies of the freight guys. Hey, it happens, man. You know, sometimes you can park up and still get a crap load. You know, so I might get something decent. I mean, who knows? I might have to go all the way back to Jacksonville to reload. I, I don't know. You know, but um, it is what it is, man. So we're going to get this one off and get the rest of the day started, man. Like I say, hey, get it on, get it off. Load up, load out, and keep going. All right, so this ain't the jankiest thing I've done seen. All right, so we get some crazy dispatch directions. No point of contact, you know, so... I get to the place and I knew it was going to be a circle jerk. <clears throat> so then a fleet manager knows like, Hey, I'm nowhere close to where I'm supposed to be at. You know, so they start filling around and they find a contact number, which I should have had prior to being dispatched. So I just passed the place just a little bit. But the thing is, it's no real road. All right. So it's like a side road, a side gravel road, and then you're next to the damn railroad tracks currently behind the damn Toyota Toyota plant. This is crazy. So got about two hours on my clock heading to Pageland, South Carolina to see him Tucker uh, hopefully can deliver and pick up out of there. You know, but who knows? So we're going to see how this goes, man. All right, I know it's probably going to be some, some crazy old load and hopefully not overloading. Truck buddy missing his mud flap. But yeah, man, what a damn debacle today, but got here and didn't turn nothing up and avoided all trains.
All right, truck buddies, we finally made it to Pageland. All right, so I didn't know when I took the load that I was going to a place where we pick up at. So, of course, I'm setting myself up while I set myself up to pull up something out of here. Had three options uh, two leaving out of here, going to West Virginia, and then one I would have to go to um, uh, Rock Hill, which is about an hour away, and then go to Ohio. Now, given the circumstances, it made no sense to leave here, go to Rock Hill to get loaded to drive all day tomorrow for the revenue. So I decided to take what's here. I'm right here and I should be able to, if I don't get there tonight, I get there first thing in the morning. So I can kind of try to get back in front of my clock. Like I said, given the, the pay choices, like I said, West Virginia is right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, woke up thing I slept wrong, damn, my damn back's hurting. But uh, anytime you have back problems, uh, you need a proxen or you need some kind of anti-inflammatory. Uh, usually uh, Motrin or Tylenol won't work. You got to get an anti-inflammatory. So got to get some more uh, Aleve, take those and uh, hopefully my back will get back to working how it's supposed to work. Cause that's, that's two things you don't want messed up is your damn back or your knees. But I can deal with my knees, but not my back. All right, couldn't get no load footage. Uh, it was too damn hot outside and my phone's gonna cut off. But uh, I wanna talk about something real quick. I talked about it before. It's kind of vital, you know, when you get your time back to start your day as soon as possible. Unless, you know, you just, you physically can't. You know, you're sick, you're tired, something like that. Now, me and my truck buddy, we got loaded at the same time, stopped at the same time, stopped at the same place. Yesterday, we stopped at uh, uh, that pod off of exit two, one or two, right there in Georgia. Or like I said, we both got time back at the same time. It was 5 o'clock this morning. I left at 515, 520. As soon as I got my time back. Because I know it's going to be a six-hour ride up here. Well, five to six-hour ride. All right. And that's without traffic. I caught traffic. There was construction. You know, that slowed me down about 30 minutes, give or take. Okay. So, it's 2.30. He's just pulling up. I got here at um 1130. That's a three-hour difference. Sometimes I'm telling you that 30 minutes this way, 30 minutes that way, it could break you. Two hours here, two hours there, it can break you on the back end. Now, there's no guarantee or you no know, that you might not get a load, but you know, you kind of damn you set yourself up in a bad way. Like I said, I was I didn't want to get up this morning, but I knew that I had to get unloaded first thing this morning. Just because I had a long way to go, I had to drive half my clock. I already knew anything happened with traffic. Same thing. I don't have enough time to get to West Virginia, but I, I might have enough time to get to Berkeley uh, Travel Plaza. I might not, though, because I got to go through Charlotte. So I'm already banking on stopping in um, uh, Virginia, uh, uh, Fort Chiswell. My time might run out right there, and I get my truck wash. I'm, I'm due for a truck wash. So those kind of things you got to think about with your time, with your trip planning, and trying to get an idea what you want to do. Like I said, you want to try your best, especially you know you got to go through a busy area and you got to drive half your clock or, you know, to deliver the following day. And you got to try to start that, that day first thing in the morning. Same thing with me. So my time's going to end at, uh, let's see, six. My time's going to end at seven. Stop at seven, start all over at five o'clock again. I'm going to be about an hour too short uh, before, I get, before I get to my destination. So I'll judge off of that what time I'm going to start in the morning. I might start at six or I still might start at five. It just depends on what time I stop and what and how many more miles I have left to drive. Cause I, uh, they start at seven. They got me for an appointment at nine o'clock, but loads just show up. I just want to time it just right. So when I do get there and get empty, somebody I'll be in the office for me to get dispatched cause my clock's going to be running. All right. So like I said, the more you do it, you'll get better at doing it. But uh, nice little simple load. They load you to the max. They have a scale. Uh, you know, you weigh your dag on uh, uh, your steers. You make sure you're not over on your steers. You weigh your drives, and then you weigh your dag on uh, your trailer tires. So you kind of just do some quick math and make sure you're good. All right. So I'm loaded to the max, of course. I don't need fuel. Uh, I wish I get to Fort Chiswell and see if I'm gonna fill up or not. I'm gonna get on the scale first, and then go from there and see if I'm gonna fill up. But I'm gonna try to get the truck wash if I can, and if the line's not too long. All right. So we'll see you in Virginia.
Up in the morning out of the wreck. Well, it's 5.30, man, 5.30. Was able to stop last night. Got a shower, got the truck wash. Still got about 120 miles to go. It's raining right now, so. Got that no tarp lumber. It's all good, man. It's all good. So I would have filled up last night, but I was trying to get in line to get a truck wash and my time was running short and I didn't want to creep around the parking lot. So I was hoping to get up early enough to not have to uh, to worry about it. So filling up now, pre-trips out the way and all that good stuff. So we're heading to down Charleston, West Virginia, man. Charleston, West Virginia. I say, man, it's the first time I got up here, there wasn't no line for the Blue Beacon. So I'm glad for that. When I got the truck wash, I went ahead and put my Ranex on my windows last night. So we'll see how that how that works out. Like I said, it's good to have, man. This is some real good stuff. It's like I said, the, some of the best $10 I spent on the road. So it might have been less than $10, but it's definitely worth to have this, especially if you got uh, bad wipers or you're in some damn snow or some kind of crazy weather. It's some good stuff to have, man. I promise you, man. I swear by it. So we're going to finish filling up. I got these last, it's like 120 or something like that. Okay, 129. Which about 8, 8.30. And get her done, man. This place is slam packed, man. I tell you, always gotta be careful when you pick your parking spot for the night because the drivers will pull their brakes and stop anywhere. Speaking from experience, man, those guys will block you in when you think twice about it. 100 gallons, we're going to top off. Someday you'll be alone Way out there in the combat zone Bullets flying all around Keep your head low to the ground Don't be sad, don't you be blue ABT will come save you All right, all right, all right, all right. here we go, here we go All right, so I'm in the middle of West Virginia Now, huh it's very vital that when you get your dispatch and you've never been to a place like I always talk about, make sure you trip plan and you, you check your route out. All right, so I'm in the middle of West Virginia. Got some lumber. It's 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 a it's muddy as, as all get out. Now, the thing about that is I can only imagine in the wintertime because there's like a 7% grade you got you to gotta come into this place going in and going out. So I probably got to go in uh, low gear one or two to uh to get up that hill now another thing about trip planning to go through town it's like a bridge it's like a two-lane bridge it says 13.5 so there's a dollar general truck i think it was a uh, hogan they stopped at the bridge now i'm pretty sure they would have made it but they weren't sure so they stopped and turned around and the kicker is their deliveries on the other side of the bridge in town they gotta go like another mile to get to other delivery but hey man it is what it is man 
If I would have had a CB, I would have told him, like, hey, pull up to it, and, I, and I'll let you know if you're going to clear it or not. If you don't clear it, you just back up. You know, no no harm, no foul. But, hey, I guess they'll figure it out. But um, one thing about these Bensons, they don't have enough winches. All right, so it's more than enough straps, though. Two dummy straps, three on there. Two here. I've got 200 and about 260 some odd miles to go. Uh, hope they got parking, so I've got to park there tonight to be set up for tomorrow since I'm going to Kentucky. Uh, Clay City or something like that. Clay something. Uh, Kentucky. So they got parking. Like I said, I'm going to park up, be ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. You got to go a long way to get home on a Friday. Hey, you got to make sure you park up every chance you get, especially on Thursday. All right, so I'm going to take it slow and smooth. It's like 40 miles going to be the longest 40 miles getting back to the interstate. It might be 60 miles, give or take. Probably about 60 miles to get back to the interstate. But hey, you just take your time. Go the same way that you came in. That's like rule number three. You know, when in doubt, go the same way out that you came in. All right. Double check everything. Everything looks good. My truck buddy behind me. Oh, Green Peter built man. He did me a solid. Now I say he did me a solid because this is my first time here and he's been here before. So they unload log trucks and all kind of stuff out here. But he was like, um, you know, I have a CB on. He said, hey, go around that log truck. You're gonna go straight to the back. So I started driving. So right, yeah, just follow that road onto the back. Turn around or you'll keep going straight. You'll see the sign. Just go up to the right. Man, okay, you see right there, you're gonna take that left. Park far as right as you can to them uh to the logs and they're gonna load you right there. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I think he's a regular. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. He's getting loaded. I'm getting I was getting loaded too. But um I tell you man, a CB man, you gotta have it on. You gotta have it on because you just never know uh what you're gonna run across. But hopefully that uh that Dollar General truck met to where it's going. Like I said, I gotta go through town. Like I said, it's gonna be the longest 60 miles. It's, you know, a whole bunch of switchbacks. And if anybody that stays in West Virginia or knows about West Virginia, hey, it, it could be an adventure, you know? So just gotta be slow, gotta be smooth, and I'll be fine. So like I said, I've got uh, about 260 miles, give or take. They got parking. I've got enough time to get there, I think. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll see you on the next one. Bam, that's how you do it. Hey, that's all the time I got is four minutes. So I, I'll get unloaded somewhere around here. Came through the front gate. Not sure where to go. So when you park, you just kind of park out the way. They got some empty trailers. I'm not blocking nothing. And we wait. Now there's some vehicles back there. Uh, maybe I'll get some kind of guidance before they head out, but I'm out the way, that's the only thing that matters, and I made it here. So I'm parked up and I'm ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, it's time for dinner. My wife made salmon for me, some baked stuffed salmon and some broccoli. So we're gonna eat on that, and uh, get ready for tomorrow. See you in the morning. Morning truck buddies, Airborne Trucker, checking in from uh, Clay City, Kentucky. So uh, it's like quarter to six. Woke up around about five. Now I've seen the drivers been coming in, workers been coming in periodically. So um, hopefully before seven o'clock, I might, you know, someone might come and tell me where to go. But if not, I have to walk back to the front and uh, I guess check in. I would guess and they'll tell me where to go. Heck, I might get unloaded right here. I, I, don't, I don't know, but um, it'll be interesting to see. Now, when I always talk about parking up and stuff like that and why it's important to do it on certain days. Now, it's Thursday. I'll have enough time to pick up and I'll get fairly close to the house. Uh, I'm thinking I'll probably get uh, something going down to uh, Georgia. That's what usually happens. I'll get something that goes into Georgia, deliver, and then 
reload and go home or something to that effect. Now, you want to try to make sure that you are trying to park up towards the end of the week because, like I said, you're going to need that time to get home. Now, I started all week behind. Like I said, I started Monday, no fault of my own because of the appointment time. You know, sometimes you go to places and you kind of play, play dumb, you know, but some places are strict. Now, I got there, I said, you know, I checked in at 10, got loaded at 11. You know, then I got, you know, redispatched. You know, out of the options that I had, I wanted to make sure I got out of Florida. So I finally got out of Florida, but like I said, the whole time, I've been behind not being able to park up and to get back in front of my clock. Like I said, it comes down to time management and good time management to make sure that you know you can kind of get home at a decent hour on Friday. You know, so when you see drivers complaining, it's not always their fault. Sometimes it's just a situation. You know, but you got to make sure that you're parking up. You know, when you leave early, you get home early. In theory, you know. So we'll see how it works out for me. But um, wasn't able to park up Tuesday. Wasn't able to park up Wednesday. Let's see, because I picked up uh, the railroad ties, and I was in traffic in Orlando, so you know that that put me behind. And like I said, you can't, you have no control over traffic. You, know, you can do whatever you can, but I had no control over the traffic. All right, so finally got loaded. Uh, by the time I got loaded, I only had I think like an hour and a half left on my clock, so I knew I had enough time to get to the to the. Uh, to the Georgia border, stopped at the pilot, got a shower, bam. You know, so when you stop early, you can start early. When you start early, you can finish early. So after I down, uh, got my day started Tuesday, like I said, I left five o'clock that morning. Like I said, hey, sometimes, it sucks, man. Sometimes you wanna get that extra hour of sleep, but that extra hour of sleep, man, I'm telling you, it can put you behind. It's happened to me before. So I finally, you know, got going at 5 o'clock that morning. Uh, I got to where I was going. It was construction in uh, North Carolina. Not North Carolina. It was uh, construction in Georgia somewhere. Got to South Carolina. Uh, got there uh, at to Pageland about 11, 11.30. Finally got unloaded. Now, this is where you kind of down, you know, things can go left or right. I had three load options. There's two out of where I delivered at, and there's one I had to go pick up somewhere. Depending on the revenue, depending on the bounce, you know, to go pick up the commodity and all that good stuff, I took the load that was loading right there out of Pageland because it was a short run for what I was paying compared to the other one that was I had to go uh, an hour and a half to go pick up, and then it's like a 500 mile drive. It made no sense. I would have to drive all day yesterday to, to most of the day yesterday to deliver. And I've been in Ohio, which would have been fine if it if it paid more because there's pretty decent options out of uh, Ohio. So I went to West Virginia. Uh, it was some lumber to Lowe's. Caught traffic there. I should have you know got there an hour early at eight. By them getting there a little after nine, got unloaded. And I had two options yesterday to go to uh, two places. One was. Uh, they're about the same distance, give or take, given a given what given what was given. But I took the one I could load right away, and I got lucky. It was some lumber like this. Now, I've hauled this before. Some of it, depending on where you pick it up at and what it is and what they're going to use it for, you got to tarp it. But the stuff I had, it was sitting outside just like this, and it needed to be tarped. I took this one. It was the shortest run, and it kind of worked out. Like I said, when I stopped last night, I had... Um, like four or five minutes left on my clock. So I'm set up for today. I'm finally back in front of my clock. So hopefully I get dispatched on something that's kind of decent, uh, a longer run that puts me closer to the house for tomorrow. Like I said, I won't get all the way to the house, but I should get fairly close. Like I said, should, I'll probably grab something that goes to Georgia or something like that. I need to check the miles from here to Florida because I'm not, I'm not too deep into Kentucky, honestly. So, but we'll see. Um, quarter to six like I said get closer to light time and I'll see somebody I ask some questions and start getting unloaded
just like that, hey, 640, like I say, man, when you, when you sleep at the customer's place, man, or, you know, wherever you're delivering to, you can't sleep in. That's why I wake up extra early just in case. And sure enough, you know, I got up, well, my truck was already running, but I turned my lights on. You know, so you're, you know, sometimes you can make, hear a lot, some noise going around, some rustling. You go ahead and get on up. So I was sitting in the seat. I seen a forklift pull up. He kind of pulled up. But I couldn't see because he, he was waving at me, I guess. So I kept looking. So I rolled my window down. So yeah, come on. Got unloaded. It ain't seven o'clock yet. Literally right here in the front. Just like I, I wasn't sure, but figured as much. Unloaded and parked right back in my spot. So I can even lay back down if I want to, which I probably will. And then um, wait to see what uh, pick of the litter I get. So I'm telling you, man, up and at him, up and at him. Drop your cocks, grab your socks. Let's go. All right, so I kind of guessed right, 50-50. Now I said uh, I had to get something that goes back into uh, with the miles probably back into Georgia, 700 miles from Florida. So I had three options. Two were in the Georgia, one was in the Florida. I took the one in the Florida because the revenue is right and it put me right back where I need to be for the week. So the week started off crappy, but I parked up. I was able to get something I can deliver tomorrow in theory if I get to certainty at a decent time. I said I'm going to uh, Woodford Plywood in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm pretty sure I got to be there before they close. But hopefully I can get here, get to Silver Grove. If it's preloaded, that's great. I'm pretty sure it's not, though. But if it's preloaded, hey, drop the trailer and handle my business and go on to, you know, and get on and get on with the get on. But if not, get there, get in line, and then just wait. Do a two-hour break and get on the road. But like I said, parking up, it set me up for tomorrow to deliver tomorrow, you know, to turn them 800 miles. So, let's see how this goes. All right, so I made it to the Grove. Got 725 miles to go. Took like an hour and a little over an hour and some change to get here. All right. I'm in line right now. There's, uh, I think, three or four trucks ahead of me. And it's already a line behind me. Probably can't see it, but it's already back to the other side of the building. But we're going to talk about trip planning uh, again on this video here. And the things to look for and the things that you need to try to do while you're trip planning. All right, so pretty much when it comes down to trip planning, you want to think about the time that you have left to drive. Now, it took me about... I already got my time back. Let's see how much dry time do I have left. I'm trying to think now, that didn't look right. Workshop driving. Okay, that's right. I was thinking, forgot. I had to drive 101 miles here, so it's almost two hours to get here. I was, I was thinking some some funky math. All right, so I got to recalculate everything. All right, so when you have time, like you know, you're waiting to get loaded. You know, you kind of get an idea what you want to do. I've got under nine hours to drive, so what I'm gonna do. To save time on the back end, if need be, I'm not gonna worry about that 46 minutes. All right, cause I gotta take a 30 minute break to get the rest of that time back. So it's only a 15 minute difference if I'm doing the math correct in my head, give or take. So all I gotta work, only time I have left to drive is that eight hours. So my backwards plan from that, I can get almost, I call 450 miles, uh, give or take with that eight hours. Go back to my trip. Now I wrote down a few places, which 
I thought I had more time than I did, and I don't. My furthest I could get, or so I thought. Where is it at? Well, too far. I, uh, Jackson, Georgia. It was 400 and... No, it might have been 500. Hold on. Hold that thought. I got my book flipped upside down. So, I had put Jackson, Georgia. I thought that's the furthest I could make it. All right. But I only got eight hours left to drive. So I said it's 450 miles. I wouldn't even be able to make it. So the furthest I could probably get is that Petro in Atlanta where I stopped at a weekend before last. It's 464 miles. All right. Of course, you know, it's it's 25 bucks to park, give or take. All right. So that's in a perfect scenario. If I hit no traffic, I should be able to get to the Petro in Atlanta on 285, 464 miles. I should be able to get there before my time is up in theory. I've already looked at the traffic on Google. It's already backed up on 75 uh, prior to getting into Atlanta. It starts getting backed up. Uh, 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 let's see. It starts getting backed up around this area right here. That's, that's just what I noticed on the map. Now, of course, that's gonna change. The later it gets in the day, it could get better, it could get worse. All right, it's, it's quarter to 12 right now. Like I got here at a good time to get loaded. I was wishing to get a preload, but it didn't work out that way. But like I said, traffic's starting to get bad around there. Uh, don't have to go through Chattanooga. Why did it take me to go off right there? Once we go down 74, I'm not going to do that. I think that's a good route, though. I'm trying to think. I had a delivery somewhere off of 76. I think it was Chatworth. Matter of fact, I think it was some insulation or something like that, somewhere around there. But what I'm probably going to do is, depending on the traffic, uh, Google will tell me. That's that's the only thing I use Google for. It's for the traffic updates. And I verify my route. But if, I, if Chattanooga looks clear, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down to Chattanooga. And go down. Now, of course, that probably gonna it's probably gonna throw me off a little bit of where I'm gonna stop at for the night. But hey, it is what it is. But the plan, since I only got eight hours, my plan is to get to a Resaca, Georgia, on 75. It's 394 miles. I stop and fill up and get my shower and be done for the night. Go ahead and uh, regroup and get back after it once I get my time back. Now, I'm probably going to do a split here just because of how the line is and how long I'm going to be here. I'm never 100% certain on how the split works. So when folks ask me, you know, my truck buddies asked me to do a video on a split, I, I, don't, I can't comment on it because I'm not 100% sure when it comes down to the electronic logs. But the plan is to... Uh, do my break here, do my two hour break, get on the road, drive whatever time I have and stop. Hopefully I get to Resaca. Like I said, get there, get my shower and refuel, get all that done at one time. Now, if I don't make it to Resaca, there's a, another pilot flying J prior to that. It's like, um, thing is Dalton I think it's another it's some, another one right here right here in this area right here stop there fill up and shower but it's 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 a tiny one so I it, depend on what time it is where I'm getting low on time it's, it's gonna you know that's that's gonna have a lot to do where I'm gonna where I'm gonna stop at for the night all right but like I said once you get close you kind of get an idea but you always want to kind of have a few places in mind of where you want to stop at the place where I'm going has no parking. I thought I'd been there before, but I haven't. They got me down for a one o'clock appointment. Now, last week I picked up in, 
I probably won't do that because it's going the opposite way. There's Milton. Yeah, I won't go there to pick up. It's too far out the way. Picked up somewhere around here. I got that lumber out of uh, West Frazier. So I have probably about half my drive time left. Uh, maybe I'll go back this way to pick up. Hell, being Tallahassee, I, I might go up to Georgia and reload. Or I might go back to um, Jacksonville and reload. Either or I should have enough time to uh, make it back and reload. All right. So that's another reason why when you stop, you want to try and drive your time out. I'm about to use half my time tomorrow to get to where I'm going. But that's the plan for right now. Get through this foolishness here and try to make it to Resaca to get my shower and fuel and start all over again in the morning. Like I said, you start early, you finish early and get back after it. So that's how we're going to do that. I'm going to continue to wait in line. I need to give my mom's a call. It's her birthday today. She is uh, 50. Hey, how old is my mom? See, no, 60, 60, I think 64, something like that. Anyway, give my mom's a call, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right, so I did pretty decent. Stop, uh, got a little bit of time still left. Uh, let's see, with the 30 minute break, like I said, I'm gonna get 45 minutes back. Had two hours of drive time. Worry about that. That's what we gotta worry about right there. We got 340 miles left. So basically, you can call it six hours. Now I get my full clock back at um, 8.30. Now 8.30 and six, that's 2.30. My appointment's at one o'clock. So we'll see how that goes. Now, another thing I'm gonna do, since I got six hours to get there, hopefully, um, since I'm on a split, like if I get up like about five or six, I'm gonna double check my hours, see how much time I have. And if I have enough time to leave, I'll leave because it's gonna be a bear trying to fight uh, Atlanta traffic. All right, so, and we all know Atlanta's hit or miss. And hopefully it'll be miss uh, when I go back through there in the morning, but we'll see. Um, but very productive day. Like I said, I started with damn near over 700 miles. And I drove half my time, or half the time. Um, since it was getting kind of late, that's why I went ahead and stopped. Even though I have uh, two more hours, could have knocked out technically another 100 miles. But then I've been getting in a danger zone of trying to find somewhere to park. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, the pilot in uh, the pilot, the the Petro in Atlanta is freaking packed. I mean banking on that crowd. So that that would have put me at like literally uh the furthest I could go. But that was only another what was that 285? Let's see, 33, 34. So like another 60 miles. Call it 80 miles. And I would have been under uh 300 miles. But I've been stopping late. It's already late as it is, it's 1030. So we'll finish up tomorrow, see how uh, the town works itself out, and we'll go from there. All right, truck buddies, we'll see you in the morning.
All right, man, it's been a heck of a week, man. Heck of a damn week. It's 8.30. I'm not gonna make it home tonight. I'm gonna be short like about 30 minutes. Now, some would say, man, 30 minutes, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over my clock and get home. Now, there's a reason I'm not gonna go over my clock. Right now, there's a purge going on. So you don't wanna do anything to bring any attention to yourself. So I'll get as close as I can, I'll stop. I'll get home first thing in the morning, ain't no big deal. Like 260 miles to uh, to Charleston, it's no big deal. All right. It don't take long to tarp a box, man. I'm telling you, 30 minutes. Like I'm, I'm eating into my time right now, my drive time, but I wanted to do the video now. But I ended up with a solid week, man. That's why I took, now if I would've took the other load that went to Georgia, I might've been home already. All right, but I need the revenue for this week. I wasn't worrying about next week. I was worrying about this week here. <clears throat> so I did pretty decent. Should have been over another five grand to the truck this week. So that's, that's two in a row. Well, I'll say three in a row. All right, so the week start off kind of weak, but I finished up strong, all right? All my straps are under the tarp. All right, like I said, don't take long to tarp no damn box, man. Don't take long. So I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna stop for tonight. And uh, cause like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it home. So it is what it is, man. I'll leave when I get my time back first thing in the morning. But hopefully everybody had a fun filled, safe week. I want everybody to stay safe, stay blessed, enjoy your weekend. Just worry about home when you're at home. Leave the road for the road, man. Take time for your spouse, your significant other, and your kiddos. You got to do something with your kiddos, man. All right, you got to do something with your significant other. And, I'm, and everything I'm preaching, I'm practicing, all right? So whenever I get home, uh, we'll find something to do tomorrow. Cause I'll be fairly close. All right, truck buddies. I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate everybody, you know, that just that rocks with me. All my day ones, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the videos. Uh, a lot of good, little good gems in here, man, I'm telling you. Like I said, I don't train, but this is to be the closest thing to training I'll do. And uh, hopefully somebody's learning something, I'm teaching somebody something, or you know, you, you choose to come to TMC or you don't decide to come to TMC, it's okay. Hey, TMC's not for everybody. Melton's not for everybody, all right? So you gotta just, Figure out what's good for you and what's a good fit for you in your situation, all right? You get there, you get your experience, you might move on. You get your experience, you might stay there, all right? So, enough of that. All right, truck buddies, I appreciate y'all, man. We'll see you on the next one. All right, change of plans. So I've got like about an hour and a half left on my clock. So it makes no sense for me to, I've already had almost two hours in a sleep or so. I'll get my time back at like six uh, after a 10 hour break, but I also get time back at midnight. So if I'm still up, if I get enough time back, <laughs> I'm freaking leaving. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna get enough time to head back to the house until uh, six o'clock, which ain't no big deal. Leave here at six, get home by about 9 a.m. No big deal. Like I said, it's been, a, it's been a busy week. Like I said, if I would've took that load into Florida, and took um I had two other options in Georgia, but the money was it was right where it needed to be for me to get to my goal for the week. So that's why I took the the load to Tallahassee. I don't regret doing it. You know, I, I drove my time yesterday and then um I had to drive some more today. But hey man, it's been a long week, man. I'm freaking tired, exhausted. I'm ready for a shower, I'm ready for a bed. Uh, I wasn't expecting to come back to Willacoochee to go pick up. Um there's like two or three places that I passed um, prior to this. Uh, there's a lumber place in Havana, Florida. They've got lumber. Um, Moultrie, Georgia. But I think the problem is I got unloaded too late. You know, so you got to think about some of the shippers are, that's going to be closed and it's Friday. So you got to find uh, a place that loads late and you got to have the time to drive to go pick up. You know, so... It kind of sucks on this end, but at least I'm reloaded for Monday. Instead of picking up Monday and being a little behind, I'm already ready, loaded, ready to go. 
I don't have that far to go. So, hey, it is what it is, man. But, um, shoot, man, it's time to talk about some stuff, but I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm just, I'm just so freaking tired, man. You know, but, uh, this week, man, I'm telling you, man, it's, it started off crazy, man. And just after, you know, I, I upload everything, I'm going to try to damn, uh, post a video tonight. Um, uh, and hopefully I'll see it in the morning or whatever the case might be. But like I said, man, I appreciate all y'all rocking with me, man. This face, man, I'm telling you. You don't you don't get ten hours of sleep, man. You might get a ten hour break, man, but you don't get ten hours of sleep. You know you gotta try to make the best of it, but don't you know don't drive tired. You no, know, don't do anything crazy like that. You know if you can't drive, you can't make it. Hey, sleep in if you have to. Like I said, that other driver that um uh, we uh, both had the railroad ties going to South Carolina. He might have been tired. You know, I mean, who knows? But you know, you, you kind of want to maximize your time and take advantage of it when you can. You know, but because in theory, like I say. If you leave early, you get home early. Now this time, you know, I left late, I'm getting home late, but that's only because of this last load that I chose. And like I said, I don't regret doing it because I um, had a solid week. But um, let's get home in the morning, man. So I guess enough rambling. Um, like I said, thank you again, truck buddies. I appreciate all y'all, man. It's just, it's just a blessing, man. It's just awesome, man. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me. You know, whenever y'all get to y'all weekend, man, Enjoy it, man. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Airborne Trucker signing off. You know, I tell you what, man, you can't get no closer than that. When I pulled up to the gate, I had one minute left. Now, I was debating about staying uh, and do my break, like my 10-hour break. But I was there long enough for them two hours. And I had two hours, I kid you not, two hours and 11 minutes, you know, that I got back from my two hour break. That got me to the house. All right, so it's quarter to one. Now, here's the reason why I did that. If I would have left in the morning, got home at nine, I would have got my time back Sunday night at seven o'clock six seven o'clock so i'll be starting off the week behind get my time back and whatnot so me leaving push that up 10 hours so i can leave sunday around two or three or or, or whatever the case might be probably four no no later than four uh it just it just kind of depends but i'm telling you man I'm tired boss See how many miles I have to go Sunday. 240 miles. We'll call out a five-hour ride. All right, so I can leave, like I said, around four, five at the latest. Stop, get the truck wash, and head on in there. They've got parking. So, all right, truck buddies. It's time to get home. I got to wake my wife up because she got the damn house locked up. The garage closed, so I'm home, though. So, hey, man, it's, it's been an adventure this week. Enjoy your weekend, truck buddies. Airborne Trucker signing off.